Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you guys my process of making a soulful melody from scratch, which could be something like a J. Cole song, Rick Ross song, or someone like that. I'm gonna show you guys the music tier behind it, the instruments I use, the VSTs I use, and more. So yeah, let's start. So when making melodies, the first thing we start with is an idea, and you know we have to pick a key. The last video I did was in B flat major, so let's do something else. Uh, B flat, B flat. Hold on, let's do G minor. Yeah, G minor. So the first thing I would do after picking a key is come up with like a chord progression, here like a melody. So I would start with something like... Yeah, and that is basically one, in the minor context, one. Major seventh on the uh, sixth, go to the fourth, and we go to the five, and we make the five a uh, major. So it kind of is like a dominant, which uh, nicely resolves to you know. And for these types of piano, we just want to make it simple. Uh, not like more Elton John sound. You know, that works, but you know, it's a little bit too much to build something off of. And a few different things you could add to make this melody a bit more interesting, I guess without doing too much, it's like, for example, when we are going to the C minor, is to go uh, at like a diminished 7 chord. And it's not like that. Or, you know, when we are going to... I just play the D sharp major 7 like this. Instead you could just like something like that also works. But yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna record this in right now. Uh, let's say 77 BPM, I'm just gonna record that. So after the piano, I want to expand the melody with a guitar. And I'm basically just gonna play the same chords uh, on the guitar, but slightly different inversion. So the minor chord be. This is gonna be the, the seventh chord, and the seventh, the uh, sixth, and uh, two. Three dominant, uh, five dominant. Yeah, I'm just gonna record that right now and. So, this is what the guitar sounds like over the piano. It isn't the best recording, but you know, it's gonna be in the background, so it doesn't really matter too much. So yeah. So after the initial uh, guitar and piano melody, uh, I want to add some drums to really sell the groove. So um, I'm gonna play in some drums on 
the drum machine and also some snares on snare rolls and stuff like that. So after recording the drums for like 30 minutes or something, uh, this is what I came up with. So after the drums, I want to bring out the melody more, because the melody is a bit uh, low right now. So I'm just going to record my Fender Stratocaster with uh, this Crybaby Wapel into my Universal Audio interface. So after a few takes with the Wapel, this is uh, what I came up with. Add some reverb on this guitar. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good for me. So, right now, I have a good foundation with the guitar chords and piano chords and also the drums to have a groove. So I want to start with uh, melody layering right now. We are gonna try to come up with some melodies on the guitar again. So yeah, I'm gonna just uh, start recording and after recording a few takes, I'm gonna try to chop up the best few. So uh, this is the melodies I came up with for the guitar. Pretty simple, we're gonna have to add some reverb to fill out the space and also make them go stereo. I have a compression on my uh, effect chain, so we don't really need to put on any UAD like compressions. Yeah, that sounds already really good. So for these types of melodies, uh, when you want to make a guitar melody on top of it, you know everyone starts talking about you know I have to learn all the scales, you know melodic minor, you know harmonic minor. But for these melodies, you just want to stay inside the pentatonic scale. It often works the best. The pentatonic notes are often the notes which work with all of the chords which are in a diatonic scale. So just, you know, play around with Inside the, you know, inside the... I like to think of it in terms of uh, chords. This is the first. Right now we're pretty much done with the you know, guitars, the piano we're done with, so what I want to do now is fill out the melody with a bass line, try to come up with something, so I'm going to pick up my bass, for the bass I'm just going to be using uh, Ampeg SVRT Classic inside of the Universal Audio interface, right now I'm just going to record the bass. So after recording for a bit, this is the bass that I came up with. Pretty good, sells the groove. Good enough for my playing at least. I don't know how to play it that much, so it's good for my standards at least. Right now I want to add some violin parts over this melody. Uh, but I can't show that because I have to use this mic which I'm doing to record with and also I don't know how to play violin so it's a bit of a cringe to show that 
but uh, yeah, I'll show the finished product. So after playing around with the violin a bit, I came up with this melody thing, which is pretty much like 100 different takes uh, compiled into one. And I also open Contact Bank Violins Modern in Session Strings uh, Pro 2 and play this. Uh, I want to add some slight uh, reverb to the violin uh, melody, just slight though, and this violin hits need to be lower. So this is what the melody sounds like right now. So you can hear the violin hits adds a lot of character to the melody, like the, the punchy, I like that a lot. After the violins I want to add some roads to really send like the old school feel. And I don't have any Fender Rhodes uh, uh, keyboard, so I'm just gonna use a contact bank for this, which is called Canterbury Suitcase. This is my favorite VST Rhodes, and I use it in all my melodies. So for the Rhodes, I want to add some, you know, higher extensions. And that doesn't have to be a chord inversion like I did right now. It could also be like melody lines which walks into like the... You know, stuff like that. And yeah, stuff like that. So I'm just going to record a few different uh, melodies right now. So after playing around with the roads a bit, uh, this is what I came up with. Sounds good, nothing special, just like adding more depth to the melody. So when I was playing around with the roads, I came up with this arpeggio idea. It's something which you play one time and it just loops with the echo. And just fades away slightly. So I'm gonna look on my synthesizer, uh, Prophet 6, to find some uh, lead sounds, which works. And I'm probably gonna use uh, some of my pedals. I don't know if I, don't know, I can show you guys, but uh... so after playing around with the synthesizer for way too long, I just had to cut the idea short and take some out and you know scrap things. And I ended up deciding with this arp. I found I don't know where I found it. Yeah, but it sounds like this at least. the melody I, I like it a lot I had a, uh, another different uh, idea where the arpeggios would be like uh, uh, the minor chord uh, sus2 no not sus2 add2 or relevant major with add2 and uh, major 7 basically had some ideas like that too but yeah this one I felt like worked the best so as I said before the camera died, the melody misses like a vocal to make it feel like an old soul uh, sample. So you're just gonna find a vocal on Splice and match it to the melody. So these are the two vocals I found. I think that sounds very good, works a lot with the melody. So this should be good enough for the first part of the melody. We're now going to move on to the second part, and I have an idea with this uh, violin chords. That like, uh, the drums, when they hit, the violin stop playing. I feel like that sounds pretty cool. Pretty cool.
So I'm after uh, I'm gonna re-record the bass for this box. So after playing around with the bass a bit more, uh, this is what I came up with. Also gonna copy these chords over. I think this works really well with the melody. That should be about it for the second part also, I think. Maybe add like a lead guitar again. So this is what I came up with on the guitar. It isn't the it isn't the best, but I feel like it works a lot. They have some cool depth to the melody, at least this part. So yeah, I feel like this is uh, all we need for the second part of the melody. So what we're gonna do right now is basically copy everything over from the first part of the melody, and we're gonna add one more thing. Because this this uh, transition isn't the best because this you know we've heard the first part a lot before. So I'm gonna play some double stops on the guitar, which is basically two notes at the same time. You know? Let's just record that right now. So this is how the double stops uh, sound like. Yeah, I like that a lot. That sounds uh, sounds really cool. Right now, I think we are done with the guitar for a bit. Gladly. So what we are going to be doing right now is to this for our fourth part of the melody. I just uh, copied some of the melodies over, like the drums, and this is what it sounds like right now. Yeah, and I have this uh, idea for Rhodes uh, chord progression, kind of. Uh, it is basically. Wait, that was a bit. Your hair, yeah. Basically, it's a G minor again. Then we go to uh, F major. Then we go back to like the. Maybe add the. Maybe not add the nine. Do like this. Then we come to the C. Something like that. And so for the next part, we could go like. Uh... Yeah, something like that. So I'm just gonna record this idea in right now. So uh, this is how the uh, melody sounds like. Sounds really good actually, I like that a lot. So right now I feel like we have to add like a piano in the background or something which adds more movement to it, so... On the 1 and 2 maybe? So after playing around on the, uh, with the piano, this is what I came up with. On 
its own it sounds kind of crap, but I feel like it works with the roads. And you might say that like the pedal drop, like when a pedal goes out and the melody drops, that it shouldn't be like that, but I feel like that works good with a melody. Right now I feel like we need to add some guitar melodies, like a, like a lead line with a Vava pedal. Stop it. Get some help. This is the guitar melody I came up with. I like that a lot. That sounds really good. For this part, I feel like we have to have another bass line because, you know, I want the bass to be do, 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 like in your face on the, on the beat. So I'm gonna grab my guitar, uh, my bass guitar and record some more stuff. So after a few different takes on the bass, the, this is what I came up with. Sounds really good. And uh, for this bass melody, my bass note was a bit uh, off. So I had to go into Melodyne to fix the bass note, make them have the right uh, pitch, you know, intonation. Right now I'm feeling a bit uh, uninspired by the melody, so I'm gonna probably take a pause and work on it later and come back with the end result to you guys. It is later in the day right now, I just decided to come back and finish the melody. So I wanted to show you guys what I came up with at the end here. Uh, we just got done with the uh, 13 to 17, so I wanted to show at 17 to 21 what I did here. I kind of switched off the melody. I wanted to do a modulation, but uh, yeah, that didn't really work. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did at least. So this is where we uh, finished that last time. That was 13. So as you can see, there's new things that come into play. I added a uh, uh, acoustic guitar that comes in here. As you can hear, I switched up the corporation slightly. It starts with the G minor again, but if we go up, uh, let me show you on piano. Like last time we started with, uh, like last time we started with the G minor. Instead of going down, we went uh, upwards. So we go from G minor, and we don't go to F major. We instead go to F over A, so basically to the fifth of uh, B flat, and. Uh, I think it was, uh, what did I do again here? Something like that. Which resolves nicely to G minor again. So after that we, uh, we added a slide guitar. As you can see here. basically uh, and we also added this uh, horn section and I also went to the Prophet 6 for this sound and for this part I basically just click uh, the octave uh, higher on the, the keyboard and it does this. Yeah. 
and after that added his uh, reverse guitars. Which kind of leads into the, the, the snare. So everything stops. I really like that and I also because of that added reverses to everything else. Which I felt uh, was really cool. And that should be about it for... Yeah, and the bass I switched up also. And that basically just follows the chord progression, the new chord progression, of course. This one just follows the same thing, drums does the exact same throughout. Took away the guitar chords because we switched up and no piano. So after that we go to section 21 to 25 and I wanted to switch it up slightly again, but not too much that you know we missed the initial idea because this is gonna be like the ending point of the sample. And here I've done something I haven't really done before. I added these uh, guitar hits and harmonized them. I felt like that sounded really cool in the melody. And uh, I also copied them over to this part. So that's pretty cool. And we also added the rolls in back here. Which I felt like matched the uh, groove pretty good. And that's about it for the melody. And also at the end I switched up the bass slightly, that sounds like this. I don't know what the fuck is happening with my PC right now, but that just started crashing, so... See, so I'm gonna just quickly show you the master preset before I have to close my computer right now. I started with this FX uh, Vintage Exciter, sounds pretty cool. Harrison to also add some high-end stuff. Then Virtual Mix Rack to basically just uh, master it, don't have it clipping too much. And at the end I also 9, just to finish it up. Nothing special. So yeah, that's basically everything. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more, please comment down below and I want to make something you guys want to see.